Not good news for the Thunder. Andre Robertson will miss another two months after suffering a setback in his recovery from a torn patellar tendon. A Thunder spokesman confirmed that OKC's defensive specialist underwent a procedure Thursday to address a suture that was causing an irritation in his team. Now, OKC currently playing without Russell Westbrook, who is coming back from knee surgery over the summer. And we, we, we really saw Andre Robertson, a guy in today's NBA where it's all about scoring and mm -hmm. offense. We really saw how much they missed the guy who does so much on the defensive end. Well, Jerry, you bring up a great point because a lot of people don't look at what he brings to the table as being glamorous. But ain't, each night you know he's going to guard the, the best offensive player on the opposing team. He's a great ball mover. Yes, he's not a great outside shooter, but he finds little avenues in the back of the defense to get easy layups, and they find him on the backside. So defensively is what he brings to the table. He's a great locker room guy. Guys like that you need around the team as you travel. So when the team going through a funk, he's that positive voice that comes in and says, come on guys, let's get going. Let's get a stop. Let's get extra ball movement, get an easier shot. So little things like that's going to be sorely missed outside of his defense like you brought up. Sure, it's year two of Paul George and Russell Westbrook together, but mm -hmm. there's so many new pieces and with so many guys missing time in the preseason, with the West being as competitive as it is, really three through 12 or 13, how deep it is the West, how far back does this set the thunder back? Uh, it sets him back in a big way, and here's why, Jared, because the continuity. Well, we know how good Russell is, but missing those games, yes, you're bringing in little gold. Wait a minute, he cut his hair. He's not a little gold anymore, so I guess <laughs> I got to call him Dennis now. Now Dennis has to learn a new system, learn playing with Adam. The other night I thought he played pretty well with the pick and roll. But to your point, with all those guys being injured, it's going to be hard for those guys to get good chemistry early in the season. So with that being said, how far do you get behind the eight ball, to your point, of trying to fight for an eight or seven spot, or like last Last year they played so well they were so high up in the, in the standings. Steven Adams the toughest man in the NBA according to the NBA he general is. manager. He is. He wants his award. He, he, he is. Give it out to him. <laughs> Preseason hoops from Thursday night. We've got Indiana taking on Houston. Rockets suffering some injuries. You know about that. So how about a uh, little James Harden. How about Carmelo Anthony at the center spot the tonight. The center. Well we don't have too many big guys left. That makes sense. Look at Melo. The center, the stretch five. Oh, the stretch five. We want to call that now number seven, the stretch five. There's his first bucket <laughs> at home as a member of the Rockets. Uh, TJ oh! Miles Turner. Oh, my goodness. He's ready for fellas. a breakout here. Yes, he is. Let's go back to the Rockets here. Michael Carter Williams rising I'm to still, the I'm still leery about this one. I love the fact the young man is still fighting, but not the outside shooter, so right. it's going to be interesting. Well, how about uh, Marquise Chris coming over from Phoenix in the Ryan Anderson deal. Uh, James Harden up to uh, Isaiah Hardenstein. Look at the new guys getting involved. But we go back to a guy who was the most improved player of the year and wants more than that this upcoming season for Indiana. It is Victor Oladipo. Yes, Victor came right to play. Get that shot out of here, Chris Paul. Well, there's the uh, block by T.J. Leaf. And then Oladipo. Yep. Yeah, the, the bank's open. No matter if it's preseason or regular season, they still cash in. Can he be better this year? Yes, he can. He's so young. Where he, I think he just tapping into we know how good he can be. Third quarter. Collis. Oh, cookies. Early yeah, preseason cookies. Put a little milk on it. Oh, got him. Transition basketball. They were so good last year running. Oladipo, 24 points Thursday night. James Harden, step back three. That never gets, it never gets old, Jared. How about one more from the stretch five? Please. Splash. Oh. Well, there's oh. the rebound. Oh, Michael you said Carter stretch Williams. five. Excuse yeah. me. That, oh, that was the Anthony. period. Excuse me. You did say stretch five. That's right. Oh, nice pass. Okay, MCW. Former rookie of the year, okay. MCW. All right, all right. 15 points, five assists, five rebounds for MCW. Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich. Oh, man. Oh, He's another guy. guy. Can he? He had a great year last two, the second half of the season. And, and so much put on him to play defense now, getting involved more offensively. Kevin Pritchard heard him speaking the other day on Barjanovic. He's so high on him, the way he has played for them. 110-100, Indiana gets the win over Houston. Let, let, let's get into this Houston squad here. And, and they're still dealing with injury, just like we were talking about with the Thunder. And that has really what has put Carmelo Anthony in the starting lineup because of P.J. Tucker being out here in the preseason. But what, what do you think of the idea of Melo at the five? Is this just 
a happenstance on Thursday night, or is this something you think Mike D'Antoni can really get some minutes out of? Well, I think it's a happenstance because the other night, and let's just go his big picture because I know our fans want to hear this. If you're playing against the Warriors until Buggy Cousins comes back, and you go with the Hampton Five, then you can put Carmelo at the five spot and match up and switch everything, all the things that we talk about. But to go big picture, I think Melo needs to be at the four. Let's call it what it is. I think P.J. Tucker needs to be at the three. When you go deep into the fourth quarter, you go deep into the, uh, uh, the season, I think that's going to be their better line once everyone gets healthy. And again, we're not trying to take minutes away from Clint Capella, who they just no, paid very exactly. Handily. I think Clint Capella needs to be on the floor. So, once again, people, the small lineup with Carmelo at the five, here and there, depending on who you're playing, how the flow of the game going. Clint Capella needs to be on the floor. Curious your thoughts here. You mentioned a little bit during the highlight about the role of, of Michael Carter Williams and maybe eventually Brandon Knight once he gets healthy. The, the Rockets, the reports are that they're going to be a lot more cautious with Chris Paul and James Harden this year to make sure that there aren't those playoff injuries and they are like the Warriors where they're peaking come April, May, and June. Well, through those highlights, it makes sense because MCW is a great slasher. But when you look at the system, we're thinking about three-point shooting. We're thinking about getting shots up early. That doesn't fit MCW. So now, if he's off the ball like a lot of those plays we saw, yeah. then it makes sense. Interesting. We'll see how the Rockets continue to evolve. We think of Mike D'Antoni, seven seconds or less. Exactly. They were so different than that last year. Led the league in ISO ball. We'll come back with a guy who's looking for another breakout. You're kind of like he had several years ago in Minnesota. The new look, Kevin Love, as the Cavs look for a new identity. We'll sit down and chat with the five-time All-Star when we return on this edition of Game Time. If you've got questions that are burning, don't go see a doctor. See the starters, because they've got 50 of them. The starters present installment number two of their 50 burning questions Tuesday, 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. The guys break down the wide-open Eastern Conference, where obviously Cleveland no longer has the luxury of leaning on the greatest player in the world. And as Kevin Love told Roz Gold on Woody, the Cavs are using this preseason to find their new identity. It's a new chapter for us. And we do have to form, as you mentioned, a, a new identity and figure out who we are as a team because we have so many moving parts. When you lose the best player in the world, you have to find different ways to, to make an impact. And I think Ty Lue is trying to you know, see where he can throw in different guys and lineups and uh, be able to establish um, some sort of continuity and synergy out there for us. So is it fair to say let's set some new expectations? New expectations, I think, for sure. But just having, you know, every day when we walk into practice, we see that 2016 banner. We see the Eastern Conference, Champion Conference Championships. But at the same time, the East got a lot better. Mm -hmm. And those teams last year that uh, were right on the cusp of, of making the finals, like a Boston or a, a Philly that uh, has Embiid and Simmons, um, you know, Kawhi, now headed to Toronto. There's just a number of teams throughout. I know there's teams I'm missing as well. Uh, Indiana, Washington, teams like that that continue to uh, get better in this league, get better in the East. So I think we need to set expectations, but we also need to play our best basketball and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. You mentioned Coach Lou. Um, what's stood out so far about him in training camp? This is a new type of challenge for him, too. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, I mean, they're all... Really, I mean, it's today we had the, probably the longest shoot around that we've had in <laughs> four years. I mean, there was a lot of uh, attention to detail, a lot of coaching going on, a lot of stopping and, and, and teaching out there on the fly. So I think with a younger team and, and trying to figure out exactly what we want there, out there on the floor has been the onus early on in training camp. So, you know, it's two weeks till we get out there and the real thing starts. So I think he's just trying to make up for that time and, and get everybody on the same page. And you're going to have an increased leadership role. Mm -hmm. What's your leadership style? Leadership style, just, <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, when Braun was here, you have to, uh, first, sometimes you have to learn to, to follow in, in, in order to learn how to lead. So I think in my first six years, we had such a revolving door with players and, uh, you know, with, with, people in management, coaches, uh, so you never really got to have any, I speak, I speak the, uh, spoke of continuity early, we didn't never had that in Minnesota and then I went into a situation, also I mentioned where we were expected to win a championship or, or compete for a championship every single year to a new chapter, so this is my 11th year in the league, I feel like uh, from a leadership standpoint I am ready to not only lead by example but be more vocal. Well, amazing to think Kevin Love entering his second decade in the NBA. The five-time All-Star has had a lot of success in Cleveland, but he's going to have to go back, as he talked about, to his Minnesota days to have that type of success. But this time he doesn't want to just put up numbers. He wants to also get back to the playoffs. 
Well, the playoffs is something he's used to now being in Cleveland. So the difference is, Jared, when he's in Minnesota, he's a young guy trying to figure out how to win. He talked about follow. Well, he's been around LeBron James now for a few years. He's followed him to learn how to win and how to be a better leader. So now hopefully Ty Lue can tap into that old Kevin Love to get more touches, feature him in the offense, and we know he's one of the best passers in our game. So as he's the best player now, supposedly talent-wise, he will be the only guy that gets double teamed night in and night out. Well, obviously his numbers went down in Cleveland because of LeBron and for a few years Kyrie and injuries impacted his play as well. But when he was at his best in Minnesota, Kevin Love was getting about 26 and 13 yes. a night. Yes. That was coming on about 19 shots per game. Does he need to get up to that number again to be as effective? Well, I think the number, Jerry, we shouldn't worry about is how aggressive is he each night and how does Ty Lue figure out the offense? Is he going to be at the high low? Is he going to be down low? And once they figure that out and get better ball movement, I think that number will take care of itself. If he comes in each game saying, I have to take 20 shots, I don't think that's going to be good for him. Cavs' second preseason game right here on NBA TV. You'll see him again against Ooh. Boston just as you did on Tuesday. It'll be Saturday night, 730 Eastern, right here on NBA TV, Cavs and Celtics. I want to tell you that it is easier and more fun than ever to play NBA fantasy with weekly lineups and head-to-head -head matchups. Draft your favorite players, compete with friends, and get closer to the game. Play official NBA Fantasy at NBA.com slash play fantasy. While you sign up, D, we'll take a break and come right on back. Fantasy?